Contrary to popular early human dogma, our ancestors were hunted by animals. We were the prey and not the predators. It's the large endemic wildlife that regularly hunted humans. We were not great nomadic hunters that tamed the wild and learned to settle. Early human ancestors were cave dwelling and largely nocturnal. Around 50,000 BCE, when it is roughly considered that our specific genus Homo sapien emerges with developed language, or with the ability to speak language, the dawn of our species, the first signs of agriculture and our current evolved split brain. We no longer lived solely inside of caves in the night, but ventured outside during the day, a major lifestyle change. Evolutionary biologists do not agree on the cause, and it remains one of the biggest mysteries of our ancestry. Only the general range of time seems to be agreed upon, that 50,000 years ago, give or take. One recent study in Earth's magnetism has revealed that major changes to the Earth occurred around that time period. A significant alteration to the Earth itself is probably the best place to start. This event could have served to initialize or further along whatever process was occurring in our ancestors. The cause may not be known, however, but the results can, to some degree, be extrapolated and explored. When humans shifted from nocturnal to diurnal creatures, we began a trend toward the male or yang energy as a species. This would eventually lead to a patriarchal species, or male-dominated. For context, many mammals tend to be patriarchal, that live mostly daytime lives, while the nocturnal species of mammals are usually matriarchal. Meerkats, mole rats, lions, and elephants are some examples. For elephants, it is interesting to note they practice a religion of the moon. Insects, like bees and ants, are matriarchal, and females tend to dominate the insect world in general. Plants often contain both male and female parts, but some exhibit more patriarchal tendencies. While fungi you could consider are more androgynous, having many thousands of genders within a single mycelial network. Humans for some reason split between male and female energies, yin and yang, likely in tune with the, with the division of the brain hemispheres. While the trend would shift toward male energy, for a very long time humans were in balance able to control equally the yin and yang, male and female qualities within themselves. Carl Jung called these qualities the anima and the animus. The anima is the male unconscious of a male, and the animus is the male unconscious of a female. Keep in mind, when talking of the male and female energy, that is not to say anything about gender or sex. Those are obviously made up assignments that have happened in more recent humans, which we will get into shortly. What I am talking about here is a duality of sorts that has been recognized by almost every culture throughout time. It is simply called male and female, yin and yang, positive negative, sun and moon, divine masculine, divine feminine, although there are many other words to describe this. It is important to clarify that as we move to the practice of shamanism that our early ancestors performed. You must first understand animism if you are to know shamanism. The belief that all things, elements, thoughts, actions, words, organisms, and non-living objects contain life, an essence of spirit or energy and memory, as well as personality and individuality. Shamanism can perhaps be considered as the first belief system or practiced system of our human ancestors that we can recognize. Shamanism itself is the communication with the earth and its animistic qualities. It's the ability to take on the characteristics of these living things, of the nature around them. One of the most important of these shamanic practices, at least to our ancestors, and the main subject of this video, is animal mimicry. Animal mimicry is found in nature all over the place, from viruses pretending to be proteins, to queen ants and bees pretending to be of a colony to infiltrate and coup the residing queen, there is a species of bird that pushes out the eggs of different species of birds and replace them with its own eggs. The parents will raise that bird like their own. Snakes, lizards, birds, insects, and many other animals have learned mimicry to avoid death or as an aid to hunting. So animal mimicry is not unheard of in nature. 
Humans use this to survive the transition from caveman to the outside life. Shamanic animal mimicry was imperative to surviving animal encounters, befriending animals, and even hunting. As prey, humans developed the ability to mimic animals, not just through dressing like an animal. It was more than that. The shaman had to behave to truly become, in reality, that animal in the physical, spiritual, and psychological sense. And attunement and love for nature are prerequisites. In order to do this, a shaman must have a balanced male and female energy, known as the divine androgen. The shaman must first be able to channel or act in the opposite energy. Existing cultures that practice shamanism can be observed doing this. The shaman may dress up as a mother and therefore balance the yin and yang, becoming androgynous, which then allows for the entering of the animal states. Music is often incorporated as it is fundamental to shamanism, but that is a topic for another video. Androgynous deities are commonplace among ancient religions. In fact, they are some of the first deities humans revered, goddess deities being the other more pronounced deities from ancient times. In terms of shamanic deities, they are androgynous, playing an instrument surrounded by animals. Dionysus, Krishna, Mithra, Orpheus, they have their roots as shamanic androgens over thousands of years, probably around 6,000 or 4,000 BCE, humans really shifted to patriarchal societies. Empires and civilizations were formed and most humans lived completely above ground during the day. Remnants of shamanism existed in certain parts of the world and there were plenty of mystery and so-called fertility cults that derived from shamanism being practiced at this time. But the trend toward patriarchy continued as humans fell out of balance. Androgynous people themselves were revered in many ancient societies and treated specially. A detailed analysis of specific religions and empires, taking into account their roots of astrology and day-to-day -day beliefs and practices, along with their archite architecture and social order, would make for a very interesting series, I think, but not something I have time to do for this video. The last part of the video I want to bring up is the modern time things we can observe. For one, animal mimicry exists in dogs and cats that we have co-evolved beside. Dogs have learned to make and look more human with human expressions, and cats have learned to use sounds we associate with human babies in order to get us to do what they want. Considering the face is so important for communication, it is no surprise that animals across different species are able to mimic their predators or prey in order to gain an advantage. We can see this happen short term as well the way animal owners tend to resemble their pets, like dog, cat, lizard, bird owners, looking like those respective animals over the course of a lifetime of living with them. Society today is trending towards androgyny, thanks, I believe, in part to technology, or rather, the lifestyle technology encourages. Though this trend has likely been creeping up over the last several hundred years, it seems close to hitting a critical mass point, an explosion or sort of cultural shift toward androgyny. But this is because many humans are staying up much later, returning to their nocturnal habits, and therefore the yin energy, thanks in part to blue light and just the ability to do something from home at night. The internet gives access to information which will only prove to educate people on the kind of intolerant patriarchal society we live in and hopefully help rebalance into androgyny and dissolve many issues society is faced with today. On a similar note, because of this increase of androgyny in recent times, I believe it can be linked to another sort of cultural trend or phenomenon, which is referred to as furries. Though this isn't the same thing as the shamanic animal mimicry, I thought it was worth mentioning for a video like this, where something like fairies are an indication of a more androgynous trend and the human ability to imitate and take on the spirit and essence of a particular animal and what it represents, a practice dating back tens of thousands of years. But I think that's a good place to end the video, and I hope you learned something, or at least got you thinking. But um, until the next video, peace out.